that the Holy Spirit will open our eyes. And Lord, I pray that we would have hearts and ears to hear and to receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Quoted to you earlier from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hey, that is a done deal. He has blessed you with these blessings. Of course, the question is, are you receiving them? But they're there. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ and our Father. According as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. God has given to you, it's already a done deal, God has given to you everything you need for life and godliness. And he's given to you exceeding great and precious promises. So here's the question. Are you walking in those promises? Are you living in those promises? Are you receiving everything you need for life and godliness? I tend to hear things like this. I don't know what's going on. I just can't seem to. Have you ever have you ever come to the altar, been prayed for, received a blessing from God, and then a couple of days later, maybe a week later, it's like that blessing dissipated. Where did it go? Or, or maybe, maybe you received an assurance from God in your heart that there was an answer to prayer on its way only for that assurance to evaporate. Maybe even that same day it evaporated. Well, dear ones, listen. God answered that prayer. God poured that blessing on you. Those were real. The problem is not that God's withholding something from you. The problem is not the lack of blessing or the lack of provision The problem is not with God's promises. The problem is there is an enemy that wants to prevent you from walking in those blessings, from walking in those promises, from receiving those answers to prayer. There's an enemy fighting you in that. Now, we're going to do a mini-series through the month of October on how to maintain blessings that have been received. How to maintain blessings that have been received. And in that, we're going to learn the tools, or at least some of the tools that the enemy uses to try and prevent you from walking in those blessings, to keep you from receiving those answers to prayer. And we're going we're to look at biblical ways that we can block the work of the enemy. 
that we can stop the work of the enemy so that you are walking in the fullest measure. It is God's will that you walk in the fullest measure of his blessings. It's God's will for you. But King Solomon wrote it this way in the Song of Solomon. I'm going to ask you to read it with me, would you please? Because this, this is the critical point right here. Would you read it with me, please? Catch us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. One more time. Catch us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. The vines and the tender grapes are God's blessings in our life. Those answers to prayer. But foxes and little foxes, forces of darkness, demonic hosts, they will creep in to try and steal those blessings that God has placed on you. To try and stop those answers to prayer. Remember Daniel? In Daniel chapter 9, he had been fasting and praying, and God sent the answer. But the enemy tried to keep that answer from getting to him, and finally, Michael showed up and said, little things that we think are insignificant, but they are spoiling the tender grapes in your life. That's why Jesus said these words in John 10.10. 10. He said, the thief comes, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I've come that you might have life and that more abundantly. See, God's will is for you to live in the fullest measure of his blessings. God's will for your life is that you live in consistent answers to your prayers. That's God's will. That's God's will. God doesn't want you living in little tiny measures, just barely getting by. That's not God's will. Well, I'm just hanging on. Well, why? Why are you just barely hanging on when God's will is for you to walk in the might and power and fullness of the Holy Spirit? Listen to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19. That you might have all the fullness of the Godhead. And being filled with all the fullness of God. I kind of mixed quoted there. I quoted Colossians 2, 9 and Ephesians 3, 19. So let me say them to you again, all right? Colossians 2, 9, In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and we are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. We are complete in him, not barely getting by, not just enough. We are complete. We're, we're in the fullness. And then in Ephesians 3, 19, he said, being filled with all the fullness of God. How many are getting the idea Almighty God means for you to walk in the fullness of his blessings? But there's an enemy who will come to steal and to kill and to destroy. So how do we deal with that? How do we deal with that? Well, Scripture shows us. There's a very interesting passage of scripture in Matthew chapter 13. It's commonly known as the parable of the sower. But you know, it's not so much about the sower because the sower is only mentioned very, very briefly in one verse. It's really a parable about the seed 
because the whole parable is talking about seed that is sown and what happens to that seed. And the interesting thing is, is three out of four of the areas where the seed is sown, the seed does not reach its full measure of blessing. In only one area does the seed reach its full blessing, 30 and 60 and 100 fold. And that's clearly Jesus saying to us, I want you living in the 30, 60, and 100 fold blessing. But there is an issue that you have to deal with. You have a personal responsibility that your life is prepared to receive that blessing in your life. So it can come to its full measure of blessing. Okay? Farmers in the room. Farmers in the room, listen up. Farmers, listen up. Or maybe you work on the farm. Maybe you're not the owner of the farm, but you work on the farm. Would you be real happy if you planted a field of corn and you got an ear of corn? Of course you're not going to be happy with that. You're not going to be happy if you get all of these stalks of corn up and each stalk only has an ear of corn on it. And then you open up that ear of corn and there's a kernel. You are not going to be happy. And yet, listen, and I'm being serious, Christians are content with that in their life all the time. Are you kidding? Why? Because we don't really believe God wants us to walk in the full blessing. And if you do believe that, you're not sure you can walk in that. Or maybe there are things that are hindering that in your life. Jesus talked about three here, where how the enemy steals. He said the first is, is the ground is so hard that the seed just falls on top and the enemy just comes and steals it. And I think that happens a lot in our life. God pours blessing on us, but the ground is so hard, it's right there, and the enemy just comes and steals it real easy. The second way is, is there are stony places. There are stony places. Strongholds in our life, stony places. And the seed falls, and it, and it blossoms, and we go, oh, it's so cool, this is so good. But a month later, it's gone. And the reason that it dissipated was because it couldn't take root. Or the seed fell in, 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 our, in our life, but we have so many weeds in our heart. So many weeds. We're so, we got so many things in our life. We worry about bills. We, we worry about this. We, we, and we let so much drama in our life, and the drama chokes out the good. The drama chokes out the good. Oh, that I can help this generation of people learn to get rid of the drama. Yeah. And what really drives me crazy as a pastor is how many people let drama of other people fill their life with drama. I'm like, really? Why do you take that on? Well, but it's my... So? You don't let their drama take in your life. But because it, it chokes out, it chokes out. And so we, we, what has to happen is we have to let the plow of the Holy Spirit plow up our heart on a regular basis. That's why the, the prophet Amos said, it is time to plow up the fallow ground, to break it up and to let the rains come, the rain of the Holy Spirit come. We got we to gotta do that on a regular basis because we, we just, we, we, well, we just let little things creep in, sins of omission as well as sins of commission, and that just kind of hards our heart, and, and, and we get busy, and, we, and, and we, don't, we don't tend to our heart like we need to, and we let, we let hurts and we let offenses get in there, and we just got to get it plowed up. Come on, get it plowed up. Come on, repent regularly. I hope you repent every day of your life. 
And I've had people say, well, you don't have to do that. It was dealt with at Calvary. And how do you think Calvary becomes effective in our life? You mean to tell me you're so perfect you never mess up? Would you please go to coffee with me and tell me how you do that? Because I kind of mess up regularly. Okay, help me feel better, church family. How many here mess up regularly? Oh, woo! I was concerned I was pastoring a perfect church and I knew that was a mess up. <laughs> so we, we, gotta plow it, we gotta plow the heart. And then we gotta, we gotta let Holy Spirit show us those stony places, those strongholds that we have that we've allowed to stay there. And we gotta get those out because those hinder those blessings from going deep. God wants them to go deep in our life. And we got to weed our heart regularly. That's our personal responsibility. Listen now to the, the writer of Hebrews said it this way in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1, 2, and 3. He said, therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. And in the Greek, let them slip actually is a Greek word that means to sail past the harbor of safety. How many times have you heard a word from God and you went, boy, that's good. Oh, I need that. And it just sailed right on by. And the next day you couldn't even remember what it was. How many times have you been reading the word of God and it just jumped out at you and that was God's word to you and you knew that was God's word to you but by noontime you couldn't even remember the address. It got by. It sailed by. It did not find a harbor in you. And see, blessings can be the same way. You can come forward and get prayed for, and God touched you, and you know God touched you. And by 6 o'clock that evening, something happened. And that blessing sailed right on by. Sailed right on by. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed that literally means you give it your undivided attention. Actually, it means you set your mind on it. You set your affections on it. You hang on to it like it is precious gold. And, and listen to how the writer of Hebrews goes on to show us the importance. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and received a just recompense of reward. What's he talking about? He's talking about Old Testament. How much more shall we, how much more shall the words that were spoken by Jesus Christ and has been confirmed by the Holy Spirit See, God wants us, God wants us. See, we have a personal responsibility here, don't we? And, and Paul wrote it this way to his son, Timothy. He said, Timothy, do not neglect the blessing that has been put upon you by the laying on of hands of the presbytery. And actually in the Greek, in the Greek grammar, it is literally, do not keep on neglecting. We can neglect it. How do we neglect it? We get so busy. We get so busy. So you get a blessing on Sunday, and, and you go out Sunday afternoon, and you've got plans Sunday afternoon, and, you, and, you, and, and, and you're out, and you're doing what you're doing on Sunday afternoon, and then Sunday evening comes, and, and you're, you're tired, and, and so you, you put on a Netflix, and you watch a Netflix, and then, and then Monday comes, and you gotta, you, gotta, you, you gotta be to work early on Monday. So you get up, you, 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 you get your coffee, and you get out there, and you get to work, and you work all day, and you come home, and you're dead tired, but you still gotta do laundry, and so you do the laundry, and then, and by Wednesday, 
that blessing is gone. <laughs> Am I preaching or are you? It's not like I don't give her opportunities to preach. <laughs> we can all identify, right? We've all been in a meeting and our phone went off. All right, so we, yeah, we get it. We get it. We're just having a little fun with it. Paul wrote to Timothy, don't keep on neglecting that blessing. And the way, the, way, the way it happens is the enemy gets you distracted and gets you busy so that the blessing that God's put in your life, you can't nurture it. You don't, you don't have the time to plow. You don't have the time to get the stones out. You don't have the time to pull the weeds out because you're too busy. You're too distracted with stuff. And folks, when you're too distracted with stuff, you're too distracted. It's time to cut back. But I find most Americans today live with very little margin in their life. They don't have time for the Word of God. They don't have time for meditation. They don't have time and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stomp on some toes here for just a second, okay? But I do it with love. There just are days you need to shut Netflix off and get in the Word and meditate. Instead of watching that program, take that 60 minutes and read the word and meditate. Meditate so that you get that blessing because God wants that blessing to take root. It cannot take root if you keep neglecting it. It will slip by. It'll slip by if you don't nurture it. You've got to nurture that blessing in your life. And I think some people think that's God's job. That actually in scripture, God gives that responsibility to us. He cannot and he will not do that on your behalf. You have to do that. You got to nurture that. And so don't neglect it. Don't neglect it. Can I, I might, since I already stomped on your toes and they're sore already, I might as well make a little sore. It, it, it's amazing to me how folks will come to the altar, they will get blessed, and then they're not in church for the next three weeks. Come on. Yeah. Come on. And I want to go, but wait a minute, God. I, I got, and, then, and then two or three months down the road, they're back again, they're going, Pastor, I just can't seem to. I, well, wait a minute, but you neglected it. Yeah. You, you were gone. Well, but, but isn't it okay to get out of town? Isn't it okay to have fun? Isn't it okay? I understand that, but dear ones, listen. We have to be careful that we nurture what God puts in our life. And we need to, we need to set a higher priority on nurturing the blessings that God puts in our life because if we don't, they will sail on by. And it's not God's fault. It's because we have let the enemy trick us. We have let the enemy trick us. Oh, I'm doing so good at stomping on feet. Let me stomp on a few more. <clears throat> Mom and dad, we have bought into a lie. We've got to keep our kids busy so they won't get on drugs, so they won't get into alcohol, so they won't do that, they won't do that, they won't do that, they won't do that. And so we keep them in dance, we keep them in sports, we keep them in cheerleading, we keep them in, we, we have them going to all of these activities. And they're so busy in all of those activities, can't be in church about half the Sundays of the year. They can't be out to, to fusion to be in the student ministries because they're too busy. And they, do, they don't have time to be around the table at home to be nurtured around the table at home because they're busy at the sports table. 
They're busy at wait. They're busy at, at, at practice. And we've got them so busy there. The ones who are speaking into their life are the coaches who may or may not be men and women of God. And they're being nurtured there. And we wonder why they're not walking in blessing. They're not walking in blessing because they don't have the ability to walk in blessing because if they receive a blessing, it's not nurtured because they're so busy in those activities. And that's the trick of the enemy to get that generation out of the house of the Lord. There's nothing wrong with football. There's nothing wrong with basketball. There's nothing wrong with cheer. There's nothing wrong with band. There's nothing wrong with any of those activities unless they keep you so busy you cannot be in the house of the Lord and you cannot be nurtured spiritually. Then it becomes a problem. Okay, I'll get off your toes. Let's go to the next one. Okay, let's go. <laughs> oh, but I tell you, it's so important. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. This is where we're going to wrap up today. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above and not on things of the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Where's your heart? Where's your heart? That's, that's the question. Where's your heart? The enemy will try and come and steal it. He will try to get you distracted so you, it slips on by. He will also try and steal your heart by getting your heart filled with the stuff of this world. I know Christians who know what Rush Limbaugh, what Sean Hannity, what these other talking heads say more than they know what the Word of God says. They read books on psychology, they read books on self-help, they read books on self-actualization. And they know more what that stuff says than what they do that the Word of God says. And all of that stuff is based on humanism. Well, don't you care about our nation? Don't you care about our, our mental and emotional health? Oh, I care about all those things very, very much. But dear ones, listen to me. Politics is not going to turn America around right now. We don't have a political problem. We have a spiritual problem. That's our problem. When America was great spiritually, we were, we were a blessing to the world. And now we are the largest exporter of pornography in the world. Our heart's sick. We need a spiritual awakening. I care about all those things. I care about how our economy is going and what it's doing. I care about those things. But can I tell you something? If we don't get back, if we don't get back to getting the majority of Americans tithing and giving, America, it doesn't matter what we do economically, we're still going to sink. Because God's blessing comes to those who honor the Lord. It really is a huge issue. It's a spiritual issue. But see, we, we, Paul is saying, look, look, you've been risen with Christ. You're, you, you are risen with Christ. You live by a greater kingdom. You're now living in the kingdom of God. Set your affections on things of the kingdom of God more than you love the world. More than you love your four by four, more than you love your fishing pole, more than you love your guns, more than you love the Seahawks, more than you love any other sports team. And I'm not promoting the Seahawks. They're not my team. I don't have a team. Okay? When, when professional athletes became more about their money and about themselves than they care about their teammates and care about, about showing sportsmanship, I stopped watching. 
I don't want my heroes to be men who beat up their wives or who have, who have a thousand or two thousand sexual trites in a pro career. And you think that's an exaggeration. You read about some of them. It's horrible. I don't want them to be my hero. I want my hero to be righteous and holy and a man of God who can heal hearts and lives and deliver them from the powers of darkness and establish them in the kingdom of Almighty God. That's who I want to be my hero. That was really weak. I guess that one really hit home, huh? Set your affections on things above and not on things of the earth. For ye are dead. You see, we're supposed to be dead to self. That's a whole new concept. We're supposed to be dead to self. We're supposed to be dead to our passions and our desires and our cravings. We're supposed to be dead to those things. Those things no longer are what make us alive. We don't live by the appetites and the passions of our sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing. We live now by the resurrection spirit of Jesus Christ in us. You're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. We were crucified with Jesus Christ on the cross. We were buried with him in the grave. And we walked out of that grave with him in newness of life. And now we walk in newness of life. We reckon ourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. We don't let sin live in our mortal body. Come on, amen. We're living by resurrection life in Jesus Christ. And we walk in the power of that. Dear ones, that is how we can defeat the powers of darkness and walk in the blessings of Almighty God. So we live in the 30 and 60 and 100 fold blessing. That's where God wants you living. Every day. Now, do we always feel it? Don't ask Wanda about whether I every day Live. I mean, I, there are people that believe that, she, that I'm just a perfect angel. I'm just soaring in God. And I don't want to spoil that for you. She told me the other day, you are a perfect angel. You're always up in the air harping. No, she didn't really say that. (laughs) But she may have thought it a few times. (laughs) None of us have that privilege of physically being in that soaring realm. But when we're talking about living in the 30, 60, and 100-fold blessing, that has nothing to do with how we feel It has everything to do with who we are in Jesus Christ and our faith in him. And that we're walking in that. My life is hid with Christ in God. And I am walking out of that identity. And I am walking in that assurance of who I am in Jesus Christ. And I am living and moving and having my being in that power and in that spirit. And so it doesn't matter what the world does to me. It doesn't matter what's going on inside my body. I am walking in that blessing. And I'm not going to let the drama of the world dictate my life. I'm not going to let the stuff going on around me dictate my life. I'm not going to let the enemy steal my blessings. He is not stealing my blessings. I'm going to keep my heart plowed up well. I'm going to keep pulling the rocks out. I'm going to keep pulling the weeds out because I want my life to be a soil ready to receive the blessings of God so they can grow to their fullest measure in my life because I am blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Come on, stand with me, will you please? Next week, we're going to pick up from here. God is wanting you to learn how to walk in the fullest measure of God's blessing in your life. He does not want you to miss this. But I can tell you right now, 
There's some of you, he's already starting to distract. You're thinking about where you got to go, what you got to do, what's going on in the rest of this day, the fun thing you got planned, got to be here. We got, it's, he's already starting to try and steal it. You better cut it off right now. You better get your mind on what God is doing right now in your heart and life. Get your affection there. Because God's got something special in store for you this morning. He wants you to walk in it. I'm going to ask the elders and their wives and deacons and their wives, please come and help us pray for people. Because I'm going to give an invitation in a moment, and they're going to come because they are ready to receive God's blessing. I need healing in my life. I need God to take care of a situation in my life. I need God to restore something in my life. I need, I need a, a restoration of my commitment to Jesus Christ. Or maybe you go, you know what? I've been away from God. I need to get back to God. I got to get to God. I just got to get to God. This is your time. God has a blessing waiting to pour into your life right now. Don't you miss it. Come up and let these folks pray for you.